First John chapter two, um, verse verse fifteen. This is our theme scripture tonight, and so we're gonna we're gonna dig in right here. Uh, of course, we have some supporting scriptures. We're gonna we're gonna uh, dig into also. Um, but if we look at First uh, John chapter two, uh, verse fifteen. As we as we dig in and once we really get into it, I'm going to read a couple more scriptures um, along with that one. Probably the three of them, 15, 16, and 17. But that is this is our focus. And so how it reads: uh, Love not the world, uh, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, the Bible declares, is not in him. Um, let's go ahead and let me read. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so um, I thought it was good for us to, to jump in um, using this scripture tonight when first john chapter 2 15 love not the world because this is something that affects every one of us um no one's exempt uh from experiencing this and having to make a decision uh, somebody need to type in in the, in the chat you, you got to make a decision all right this is you know uh uh, you know, this is a, this is a valley of decisions right here because uh, the world, you know, we got to be honest. The world is enticing. The world uh, has a lot to offer in, in a in a natural sense. Uh, the world uh, is fun. Uh, you know, seems fun. Uh, you know, on the, on the outset, you know, the, and and so uh, and so we can't we can't try to act like the world is not enticing because if the world wasn't enticing, uh, it wouldn't lure, lure so many <laughs> uh, from, from holding on to God's word and living for God if it, if it wasn't so enticing, right? Um, it, if, the, if the world didn't have so much to offer, uh, you know, the deception wouldn't be so real and, and it grabs, grabs the young people you know, kids grow up in church and then they get a little older and then the world just grabs them. Right. And so and so uh, the world is real. And so uh, we got to deal with this. We got to talk about these things, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's about making the decision. Um, what, are, what are we going to love? What are we going to fall in love with? And so what we love is what, you know, is what's going to guide us, be our, you know, is, is what's going to, uh, <clears throat> well, like I said, what, what we love is what's going to, is what, what we're going to follow after. And so, and so if we really love God, you know, we, we'll follow him, we'll follow his ways. But if we love the world and we get enticed by the world, we will follow that which is in the world. Right. And so uh, we can't say the world's not tempting. The world is tempting. Uh, the, Jesus was tempted <laughs> with the world. Y'all, he was in the flesh. And so he allowed himself to be tempted, you know, uh, as soon as he was baptized, you know, and the dove and all that, you know, that came upon him was the Holy Spirit, you know, descended on him as a dove. The very next chapter in Matthew chapter four, uh, and Jesus was led into the wilderness of the Holy Ghost. And what was he that he, he immediately went to get tempted of the devil from from worldly things. Right. And so and so uh, Jesus had to go through this. He had to understand uh, he had to go through uh, the process of being tempted uh, by the world. Otherwise, he couldn't relate to us. Otherwise, he couldn't help us um, to make a decision. Right. And so because he went through it, because he endured now with his help, y'all, it's, it's God's help. Uh, because if we be honest, uh, you ain't resisting the world without the grace of God on your life. Anybody honest in here? I may try to resist the world and everything the world had to offer and try to do it without God. It don't work, right? <laughs> you will fall. You will, you, will, you, will, you will go after whatever the world offers, right? And so we need God's help. And so he had to make a way. He had to prove to us that he can overcome. And now we can overcome through him. And so this is why we're dealing with this tonight right? Uh, the devil 
tempted him, took him up to a very high mountain, uh, and he looked over and he saw all of the worldly goods and everything that the world had to offer him. And the devil told Jesus, he said, hey, if you bow yourself down to me right now, if you bow yourself down, I will give you all of this world. All right. The devil said, I give you all of this. Right. And so and so Jesus had to make a decision. All right. What was that decision? Somebody remember that story. Uh, Jesus had to make a decision in that moment. Right. What am I what am I going to do? Am I going to be enticed by this world? And all the things that the devil can offer me. Well, it's a question. Well, well, uh, don't Jesus own and offer everything? Yeah, he does, right? But the reality is he gave the adversary, he gave him the control and dominion over worldly, worldly things, y'all. And so uh, that's why you got to be careful uh, what we go after and where it comes from, <laughs> because you know we thinking, oh man, I man, I I got all, I got it going on in this world. I'm I'm living the dream. Well, where's this dream coming from, y'all? The devil, the devil can give you so much stuff that you think, man, you know, I'm living blessed. Really, it ain't from God. It's from the devil, y'all, uh, because the devil can give us so much stuff and keep us from keep us from even having to need God. You know, what movie was that? Uh, and it was the movie, uh, God's Not Dead. Anybody seen God's Not Dead? Any hand emojis, right? I think there was a character on there. I remember vaguely. There was a character on God's Not Dead, right? And and he had so much stuff. He was living, he he was so successful in his life that, that he didn't even need God. And um, everybody remember that part of that movie? And, 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 you know, he found out towards the end how, how you know, destitute he was and, 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 and how, you know, you really didn't have life. You weren't living. You, you know, you were, you were really, you know, depressed and sad, but you had everything this world had to offer you. Uh, but, but that missing piece, that void in your heart uh, that only God can feel, he didn't have it. And so that's why that's why we have to be careful when we chase it, when we're chasing, you know, uh, worldly things and, and those kind of things, because uh, ultimately it will leave us void. It will leave, uh, leave us destitute of, of the presence of God. Y'all think about the rich man. Right. What did the rich man do? You know, he came to Jesus and he thought he had it going on. You know, and this is why, you know, God help people that are, are rich and don't really need to depend in their mind. They don't have to depend on God. You know, they, so they, uh, they trust in themselves. They trust in their money. Right. And, and, and they try to just take God along for the ride. What did the rich man do? Um, the Bible says he, he went up to Jesus and he was like, you know, father, good father, you know, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus began to, um, you know, run down some things, you know, of, of the commandments that he ought to do. You ought to do this, A, B, and C. And so he began to run down a list of things that you should do. And then he said, he said, oh, man, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but let me talk how, you know, we would talk. He said, man, I'm, I'm cool, Jesus. You know, I, I, I do that. I'm, I'm cool then, right? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I do all that you just said. So I got it going on. Jesus said, well, wait a minute. There's one thing you lack, all right? Uh, there's one thing you lack. And so Jesus began to go deeper, right? He, he understood. Uh, he, he understood. All right, you cool on the surface, your surface relationship. We're going to dig in that a little later. Uh, your love for me on the surface is good, but, but do you really love me? Here's what you lack. I want you to go and take your possessions, your money. And I want you to sell all that you have, and then I want you to come follow me. All right. And then the Bible says, we understand the story, right? If you read the story, the Bible says he, he was caught, y'all. He, he had a decision to make and um, he didn't make the right decision, right? He made a decision uh, because he, he, he rather trust in what he could see right there. Uh, you know, the, his money, his money. Uh, and so that was his God. That's what he loved. And that's what he, uh, he thought could take care of him. And so the Bible says he left out of Jesus' presence very sad, y'all. He was very sad because he, he made a choice to trust in uh, uh, that which perishes, right? Money. Right. And so you don't even hear from him anymore. Right. And it's sad. He left it without a relationship. What he what he didn't realize was, man, if you would have if you would have given and, 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 and obey what Jesus told him to do, 
If you would obey him, see, this is, what we, this is what people get mixed up and deceived about. Well, we think, man, I just got to give everything up and I got to just be broke, poor and sad and miserable for the rest of all my life to serve God. No, that ain't God's will for us, y'all. Uh, you know, some people have a, they struggle through some things, but that rich man, if he would have took all of his possessions and sold all of that and, and, and followed Jesus, Come on now. Jesus would have gave him double, triple. Jesus would have blessed him with so much more because now I can trust you because you love me more than all of that. Right. And he could have, and he would have, he would have blessed his life. And then he would have had, he would have had money, wealth, and relationship. Y'all, how many want money, wealth, money, wealth, and relationship? I want it all, y'all. Come on. Uh, we and, and we can have it all, y'all. So look, don't don't get out here. You know, there's there's a uh, there's a religion, y'all. I can't remember who they are. I'll look them up, y'all. They think you gotta be you gotta beat yourself down and be the poorest, uh, uh, most miserable people to have a relationship with God, y'all. This is a re this is a real uh, following. Somebody, who? What relationship? What religion is that? If you look it up, y'all, look them up. Elder Nehemiah, somebody help me out, y'all. This is a real uh, uh, group of believers. They have a name, y'all, and so they feel like you got to you got to be miserable to have a relationship with God. You can't have nothing. You can't have no money. You can't. You 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 got to be poor, broke, busted, all of that. Um, this is real life, y'all. But uh, help me help me find who them people are. Look, we don't have to be like that. Um, the uh, you know back in the day, the. the, the, the you know, Lord help the saints. You know, they thought they thought uh, you had to be poor. To the, the poorer you are, the more relationship, the stronger relationship you have with God. All right, um, it don't have to be like that. You know, uh, it, now it is harder for rich people, y'all, um, because rich people trust in themselves. But look, again, I want you can be wealthy. <laughs> And, and wealthy spiritually and naturally, okay? Uh, that's the kind of God that we serve and I'm working towards it, y'all. Anybody else working towards it? I want a wealthy mind. I want a wealthy bank account. I want a wealthy spiritual walk with God. I want it, I want it. God said we can have it. So I wanna find out and work in this journey how to, how to get that, all right? And do it in a way where I, where my love doesn't wane, all right, or my love doesn't go the opposite way, but do it loving God, okay. And so that's that's what we're that's what we're working for, okay. And so and so here again, we're looking at our focus scripture: uh, love not the world, okay. Uh, we can't afford to love this world. Uh, I don't need Maya understand this. Your, your parents in the, in the old school, he'd been around a, a long time, right? They said, my mama said, you got to wear, wear this world as a loose garment, right? You got to be ready to take this world off. You got to be ready to, uh, to, to, to turn your back on anything that this world has to offer in any given moment. All right. Well, first of all, what is the world? Somebody talk to me now. Come on. What is the world? What is that? Somebody like, well, what is the world? <laughs> what am I? What am I turning away from? What am I doing? Bible says, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. What are? What is the world? What are things that are in the world? Somebody talk to us. Talk to me. Music. Somebody said lust. Somebody said so. We're turning away from lust. Yeah, lust of what? What do we lust after? Uh, Somebody said pride. Why do we have pride? Somebody said music, lust of the flesh. What is lust of the flesh? Somebody talk to it. What is that? What is that? Sin. The lust for sin. Yeah. The, the sin and the whole umbrella of sin. The whole mm -hmm. umbrella, right? <laughs> Self-satisfaction. Right. So, so obviously sin covers it all. Right. But, but, but we, we, we break it on down. You say, uh, would you say somebody said, uh, self-satisfaction, right? Um, uh, that's, that's a good one too. Right. Um, somebody said drugs and worldly things, op you know, opposition to God's word. Y'all, this is good stuff. Um, fleshly wants and desires, right? Somebody said that. Um, ungodly things, you know, uh, everything, everything that's opposite of God's word is worldly, right? Uh, you know, uh, and so a worldly mindset, right? Worldly, a, a mindset that is not biblical, 
okay? That, that, is, that is of the world, right? Wisdom of man's wisdom, right? The Bible speaks about how God confounds, confounds the wisdom of man, right? Because men think we are so, we are so smart and so, uh, and so full of wisdom. And so he confounds uh, the, 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 the wisdom of men with, with simple stuff. You know, and so, but we can't be so in love with, with man's wisdom. That's why Paul said, I don't come to you with, with, with enticing words of man's wisdom. This is what the apostle Paul said, but I come to you in demonstration of the word and power, right? Demonstration, uh, stuff that, that come, that, that confounds the wisdom of men. Men can't figure out how, how, how God's word uh, can speak to somebody and, and, and people can jump up and can be healed and people can be delivered. How, uh, you, you can spend your money, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood, right? Uh, spend spending money all and on all the physicians and still couldn't find any any help and any healing, right? And then you can just touch Jesus. You can get in His presence, right? This confounds the wisdom of men, right? What the doctors can't do, what psychiatrists can't do, what lawyers can't do, and you can touch Jesus. You you can get a hold of God. You can get a hold of His Word, and and you can instantly, right? Some things can change and turn around for you right somebody all right so th these are, we got to understand the difference somebody says slothfulness all right slothfulness somebody else what else what is the things of the world things of the world we need to make it clear right uh we need to make a distinction so that we can make a decision uh because you know people have got we got to make a decision right uh joshua said it like this he said as for me and my house we're going to serve the lord right um we got to make a decision what does that mean to serve the lord what are we turning away from the things of the world love not the world the things neither the things that are in the world what else is in the world y'all y'all come on the world is enticing uh, all of us that grew up and do you want to save your whole life? What, what did we jump out into? Somebody said intimate relationships outside of marriage. Yes. Got all kind of iniquity, money, money, absolutely worldly chasing stuff, right? Love of money. What else? What else are the things that are in the world? Hallelujah. Think about the world in general. Think about scientists, right? They 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 look out and they are in they are so enamored about everything that is in the space, the stars and everything. And and so they well, begin um, to, they begin to worship the creation, the Bible says, right? They worship the creation more than they do the creator, Romans, right? And so and so they are so caught up and thinking, wow, right? And they're trying to figure this thing out. So uh, somebody else is about to say something. Go ahead. Holy discontent. Mm. All right, we're getting deep on here, right? Come on, talk mm. to me. How about fame? Fame, absolutely, fame. Jesus was tempted with fame, right? Fame, and and, and we got to watch that. The Bible says this, you know, when when we got to be weary, be leery when all men speak well of you. Come on, <laughs> when everybody, yeah. So 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 when when everybody celebrates you and everybody you you just everybody loves you. You better, you better watch yourself because everybody don't even love Jesus. So if everybody loved you, something wrong, all right, something wrong. And, uh, and, and, and if a lot of people who ain't saved love you, um, you really need to uh, check yourself <laughs> before you wreck yourself, right? Because the Bible says the world loves their own, right? <laughs> the world loves their own. And so, so everybody in the world loves you and God forbid preachers that everybody in the world loves, you know, I ain't coming for nobody, but look, this is what the Bible say. <laughs> the world loves their own. There ain't no preacher that the world just so going to grab a hold of and oh, that's, you know, that that's the American preacher. Everybody love that preacher. No, yeah, it's something going on. Some, some ain't right with that picture, right? Because, uh, Hey, the world, the world don't want to, people that love the world don't want to hear the things of the Lord. People that love the world, they don't want to get right, right? They don't want you singing that song, get right, church, and let's go home. Uh, 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 get right, church. 
unless the people don't want to hear get right. People want to say, I get, I get it after a while, but right now I, I, I got some life to live. Y'all, uh, when we were young, that's what we said, right? We said, we said, man, I don't, I don't want to live, you know, I, I believe in God, but I ain't, I ain't trying to live for him right now. I want to, I want to live life. And how many said that when we were young, right? I want to, I want to live a little bit and experience some things. And, and, and then I'll, I'll give my life to Christ, y'all. Um, yeah, I, we tried it, right? <laughs> and we opened up some doors that, how many opened up some doors we wish we never opened, right? God, right? But God is rich in mercy. We ought to give God a praise right there. He's rich in mercy because we opened that door up. We thought we wanted to live that life and do and experiment with some things and 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 and, and it cost us, y'all. You know, look, look, worldliness cost me. I'm mean, even dumb stuff. You know, my mama said, my mama said, you better not get your ears pierced. <laughs> She says, I wasn't saved. I wasn't saved. You know, I'm growing up in high school. All right, mama, I ain't gonna get my ears pierced because I don't want to hear your mouth. But when I turn 18 and I go to college and I'm with my roommates, I'm gonna go get my ear pierced. All right. So I'll go when I get 18, I'm in college I'm with my roommates and we go to the mall, Greenwood Mall, y'all. And I go get my ear pierced. Man, we banging, y'all. Man, boom. You know, I got my ear pierced. And it, it went too much longer, y'all. And I had a third ear growing on my ear, y'all. That keloid was so big. Man, you talk about humility. You talk about humbling me, uh, made me not want to come outside, made me not want to do anything, y'all. Somebody says you go to Claire's. Yeah, I went. <laughs> nah, I didn't go to Claire's. I went to the little booth that was outside in the in the foyer area. I should have went to Claire's. Nah, I, I don't care where I went. God was gonna show me something. All right, you want you you want to live worldly? You want to experience worldly things? I'm gonna let you grow an ear. And when I tell you that keloid was so big, y'all, let me see, it, it, it would hold and hang down this long on my face. <laughs> I try, I, I, every day I had a process. I'm gonna wash myself, my face, get myself together. And I would tuck my third ear behind my <laughs> ear, y'all. And I would just push on it all day. Uh. I will push on it so it'll stay stuck up there. And when I'm hooping and when I'm playing, my ear will fall down and it would just jiggle all hanging. And I would be so sad, yo. <laughs> and I had to tuck it back up, yo. I got married with three ears. <laughs> I was so sad, y'all. But thank God, Lady Valley, she really loved me, y'all. I look like an alien, y'all. I had three, and I mean, I ain't gonna talk about people, but, but look, I've I been there, so that's how I felt, y'all. But I, but since but since I worked at UPS and we had some real good insurance, y'all, and I got some laser surgery, man. <laughs> hey, I say, hey, when I when that insurance kicked in, got that thing cut off, and man, you talk about you talk about man, I was grateful. <laughs> But that's just my experience. You know, one of my experiences with, with, with someone said, you was happy. Yeah, I was happy, bro. I was smiling again. I, I got a little scar. I got a little scar to re remind me, y'all. And so when my kids, they want to get their ears pierced, look, y'all, you know, hey, no. <laughs> just from a just from a standpoint of you might get a third ear it might run in our family i don't know man so look hey that's what it is but what my point is experiencing the world i want i was so excited about trying to go and live after you know my own pleasures my own desires live apart from the things of god it wasn't about my ear pierce getting your ear pierced is not a sin Brothers, one thing we should, you know, that's a whole other deal, y'all. Brothers, come on, we don't, we we can come out of that, we can grow out of that stuff, you know. But but sisters, you know, y'all get your ears pierced, whatever, whatever. Uh, for me, it brought a whole other spirit, you know. And so God let me, He let me, uh, He had mercy on me, so I cut that spirit off when I got that ear, that third <laughs> ear cut off. <laughs> I'm just being real, y'all. But 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 again. Um, loving the world y'all it cost us loving the world it, it, you know it, it, it in the end it ain't worth it it ain't worth it and so we got to make a decision we got to make a decision 
whom choose you this day, whom you will serve. We got to make a choice, the Bible says, all right? So we got to choose. We can't afford to love this world. We can't afford to be deceived and not understand or discern what's coming from God and what's coming from the adversary, y'all. Some of us, the adversary knows that there's a calling and there's some things that, 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 that God wants to do in our lives. And so the devil will offer us some things, y'all, uh, just to keep us distracted just to keep us unfocused, to keep us out of the will of God. The devil will send re relationships our way. Um, uh, and so look, y'all, uh, if a relationship take you out of relationship with God, come on, we like, man, he, he fine, she fine, they provide, they help me, they, they do all this great stuff, but man, I don't got time to pray no more. I don't got time to commit to the things of the Lord. Uh, I, you know, my relationship is, I don't think about God as much anymore. Y'all, that is not from God, that relationship. We got to be honest about it, right? That job, the devil can give you a job that will that will pay you. Come on, y'all. Y'all better hear what we're saying. The devil will give you a job that will pay you. And you like, man, pastor, this is God. I'm making $58 an hour. I'm making $58 an hour. Man, I work. I, but, you know, I got to work. You know, I got I got to work. Um, you know, I can't, I, you know, I can't go to church right now. Every, you know, I, I can't never go to church. No, I can't never pray. You know, I can't never, I, I, you know, I, you know, I try to fit it in when I can, but you know, this job, this job, this job, y'all come on. We gotta, we gotta make a decision. Is that job really from God or the God of this world, right? Satan is the God of this world. And so we got to know because anything that leads us away from God is worldliness and is not of God. And so we got to understand the difference, y'all. And this is what the Holy Ghost is for. He helps us to discern error from truth, y'all. And so look, y'all, I'm not trying to come for nobody, ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but look, y'all, we want to be close to God at the end of the day. All right. It's all about relationship. All right. And I know I just went on a went on a, a, a tangent. Somebody said real love, y'all. Uh, look, all right, we, we're going to get we're going to get with that. All right. So so let's look at this. Y'all love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, if any man love all the stuff we've been talking about, love all the desires and pleasures that we've been talking about. The Bible says the love of the father is not in him. I didn't say it. God said it. All right. We can't love both. Okay. We can't be in love with both. Uh, we can't have both. Right. What is that old, that old cash for that old phrase? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. <laughs> you, it don't work like that. Right. Well, people say, man, I can live my life and I, I can, I can have my relationship with God too. No, man. God said you can't. So how are you going to tell him you can? Well, somebody said, well, I can make it work. Well, no, you can't make it work. God said it ain't going to work, okay? So let, let's just make a decision, all right? Uh, because uh, if you love the world, the Bible says the love of the Father is not in him, y'all. And so we don't want to get caught on that day, on that on that last day, that judgment day, right? When God say, I, when he will say to many, I never knew you. He said, I never knew you. Um, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You workers of iniquity, depart from me, you lovers of the world. He said, I never knew you. Um, we didn't have relationship. We weren't close. You didn't listen to me. You didn't follow my path, right? You chose to try to have both and play the, play the, play the field. All right. And so, and so again, again, this month is love y'all. And so we're talking about real love. So the Campbell said real love y'all. Let's, let's, let's give God real love. Okay. Real commitment. Okay. And so, and so that's what's, that's what, that's how our life is going to be blessed. That's how, hallelujah, uh, our life is going to be made wholesome, right? And, uh, and, and we're going to be able to have a meaningful uh, life that's filled with purpose because we, we, we got real love. Here's what, here's what Moses said, y'all. And Moses, I'm going to open it up so we can talk and share y'all. You know, I got to warm y'all up because y'all leave me hanging, right? So I'm going to leave, I'm going to talk, I'm talking y'all uh, and I'm teaching right now. So then I can start up some conversations so y'all should be good and, and ready to share praise the lord y'all but think about moses moses grew up in in um in the pharaoh's home right he grew up he grew up in the egyptian way
ways. He was he was wealthy and rich. He had all of the all of the the, the uh, riches that Egypt had to offer him. Right. But when God began to deal with his heart uh, about God's people and, and, and the revelation to him that hey, he was one of them and, and he, there was a purpose and call on his life to go back and to uh, save God's people. Here's what the Bible said Moses did. Moses, again, made a decision. OK, uh, somebody look at that scripture up and, and, and type it in here so that so that um, we can go back and reference that scripture. But here's what here's what the Bible says. The Bible says Moses chose rather to suffer with the people. He chose to suffer with the people than to uh, enjoy the pleasures of sin, the pleasures of this world for a season. OK. And so, again, Moses made a decision and it cost him. It cost him, y'all. It cost him the riches and the fame and the fortune and, and the stature and all of that stuff, right? He chose rather to suffer, y'all. Hey, come on, he was in the in the in the Pharaoh's house. Why, why leave that? And it, it's you know, Cush, you got everything, you got servants at your at your feet, y'all. But he chose, he said, man, no. He said, I'd rather live out and suffer with God's people. Then and 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 understand that that there's going to be something greater than what Egypt had to offer me. So he said, I'd rather suffer right now and then and, and to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Y'all, this world is only for a season. And so, and so that's what we got to understand, y'all. That's why we can't get caught up. Like David said, he said, he, he, you know, uh, he, he got he got weary. You know, he, he almost slipped. The Bible said when he when he began to look at the uh, you know the wealth of the wicked, the riches of the wicked, and saw how they were getting up and winning in this world, and it made him for a moment get upset. Like man, man, they getting it. They living good. And why am I out here? I'm trying to live for God, and I'm struggling for a minute, right? Uh, but he had to see God had to give him revelation. Uh, but this this ain't going to be all like that always. There's going to come an end to uh, the wealth and the riches of the wicked, okay? Uh, so so let's look at, again, 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse, you got 16, and let's look at 17, right after the love not the world. The Bible says, and the world passes away. The world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. And so this is this is this ought to be our focus, y'all. Um, we're we're going to make it. Um, we're going to endure through some things. There's a there, there, there's you may not be you might not be a millionaire on this earth. Some of you might. I pray you do. All right. Now don't forget God. Right. Don't forget the church. Be a blessing. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. But 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 if you're never a millionaire in this life, y'all, just just know. Y'all, there's going to be a day when all this is over and we're going to we're going to be with the Lord forever. Right. There's going to be streets of gold. There's going to be no sickness, no night. There's going to be joy. There's going to be there's going to be all kind of great, good things that's going to be going on forever. Y'all. Uh, and so, look, y'all, I mean, I don't believe you're not going to just be sitting around. Somebody said, well, why we got to go to heaven? We ain't going to do nothing but sit around and praise God. Man, come on. Praising God, that's going to be a part of it, I'm sure. But you're going to live. He ain't going to tell us about streets of gold and, 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 and all the great things in heaven if you ain't going to be able to uh, enjoy none of that. All right. So uh, you're going to want to enjoy, but because you enjoy it so much, you're going to want to praise God. You're going to want to just give him glory. Right. Uh, the Bible says it's not even going to be a sun because the, the light of his glory is going to be the light and going to feel heaven. Y'all. And so his glory is just going to it's going to manifest. And so you you ain't going to want to you're going to want to praise him. You're going to want to be in all all day long, y'all. Because I mean, who he is, and so and so we got something to look forward to, and so you know you don't hear too much talking about heaven, y'all. We we want heaven on earth, we want riches on earth, and all this stuff now. But look, y'all, um, God's gonna come back, uh, our, and 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 we're gonna die, and so before we die, we got to make our callings and our elections sure. Okay, the Bible says, "As a tree fall, there shall it lay." Okay, however a tree fell. That's where it's going to lay. So just think about that. However we fall, however we die, you die loving the world, you ain't going to wake up in glory. Oh, well, I love God now. I die. <laughs> no, wherever, however that tree falls, that's how it lays. So, so let's not get caught 
right? People will say, well, I'll wait till I'm on my deathbed and then I make my confession. Y'all don't take that chance. Some people, some people might get that, that, that mercy and they can do it, but everybody don't get that mercy. Let's make our callings and elections sure right now. All right. All right. This world is going to pass, but they that do the will of God is going to abide forever. I'm stopping right now. I just talked for 30 minutes. I know I don't like, I don't like doing that. So y'all better come on, talk, talk. Let's, let's go ahead and, and sharpen one another. Um, uh, for the love of what scripture uh, convicts you most or stirs your heart to draw nearer to the Lord, right? We talked about love, not the world. We got Luke, we got Joshua, we got Psalms. Uh, we have Matthew. Um, somebody talk to us. Let's, let's go ahead and share right now. We should be good and stirred up. He said Luke 7, 41 through 43. So go ahead, talk about it. Psalms 119. It's on your handout. So, so as you read these scriptures, um, which one kind of stirred your heart or, or made you like, all right, man, I gotta, you know, I, I need to draw near, or it just stirs you to draw near. Somebody talk to us. the forgiveness of the predator like it wasn't like he had to take time to think but he had to pray about how he was about he frankly just forgave him he just forgave him he forgave him yeah but what what else you would you pull out of that one that 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 one's loaded and then the lord told him that then he rightly judged him so he forgave him he, he did what was right in my spirit mm -hmm. So, so let's look at that one. I mean, you look at Luke 7, 41 um, through 43. Of course, Jesus is giving an illustration here um, about the creditor, right? And, and, and those that owe some debts, uh, one owe 500 and the other owe 50. And so he asked the question, of course, who's going who's gonna, uh, to gonna love him most? And of course, the you know, Simon answered and said the one that, that, that was forgiven the most. And so he said, oh, you, you understand this, Simon. And so, so let's look at this in context. When you look at um, Luke chapter seven and you look at it in context, um, Jesus is really coming for uh, Simon, y'all. And, 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 and so here's what we don't want to get caught. Like Simon, Simon is one of those that represent those that have a, a a love for God, you know, love L L U V. I, I love I love God, you know. And so we 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 got we know a lot of people like that, right? Some of us might have been like that. Yeah, I love I love God, you know. It, it's it's more of a it's more of a show. It's more of I'm doing God a favor by showing up to church, mm. right? Come on, y'all. <laughs> that's that's how Simon was. L look at this in context. Um, Simon, yeah, Simon might not have been, Simon may or may not have been a, 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 a drug dealer or, or out here bad, you know, uh, messed up in this, in this world, you know, uh, Simon might have been rather the one that grew up grew up in church and and knew how to play church he knew how to he knew how to look the part shout the part he knew how to say you know speak the part you know hallelujah praise the lord he knew how to play church right and so and so um when you look at this um the bible speaks about how simon invited jesus to his house this is this is luke chapter 7 he invites jesus to his house and and it was more of a of, of, of formality just 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 to say that i had jesus over my house some people come on man, their love for god is not real it's not it's no depth to it you know they just they just want to invite jesus over just to just to you know say I, i'm a christian i'm a good christian yeah I, I believe in jesus i love jesus you know i i got a bible in my house somewhere um you know uh you know we 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 pray we pray for our food <laughs> right and so and so that's how simon was simon simon had a show he was a pharisee right he he uh he knew how to dress the part. He looked like all that. But when he brought Jesus to his house, 
right? Um, the Bible says he didn't, when you read it, he didn't honor Jesus. He didn't wash his feet. He didn't make him feel welcome in his house, y'all. Come on. He didn't, he didn't take care of Jesus. And so look, y'all, we, we, we can't be like that. You know, we can't, we, our, our relationship with God needs to be real. We need to honor him. We need to really serve him. All right. It got to be more than a show. We got to let, we got to let God really deal with us. And so, and so here you have the center. The Bible says the, the woman, verse 37, uh, the woman in the city, which was a sinner, everybody knew she was a sinner, right? And so she knew Jesus was there. So she brought something. She brought something, right? She broke something off on him that cost her something. And so that's why Jesus um, made that illustration about um, the 50 pence and the 500, right? The who, who's going who's gonna to love him more? That, those that were forgiven most. And that's how we are, y'all. We look like, man, you know, I, I went out there like a lot of other people. So, I mean, my love for God ain't really as strong or I don't appreciate God as much because God ain't really brought me through uh, or brought me out of something that, you know, he might have brought somebody else out of. And so we don't want to get caught like that. Right. Uh, and so and so our love for God needs to be deep and real, understanding that we are still all sinners. I don't care if you ain't never uh, abused alcohol or abused drugs or if you ain't never shot nobody. <laughs> Y'all, all right. So uh, just the fact that we were born in this world sinners, the Bible say, I was, you know, I was shaping in iniquity, David said, and in sin that my mother can, uh, you know, what is the word? I, I just lost the word. <laughs> and shaping in, in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. That's the that's the word I'm looking for, right? And so the very fact that we were born, y'all, uh, we were born in sin. So, so let's not take that for granted. Let's not look at the fact that, man, maybe you didn't do a whole bunch. Some of us grew up in different households. We ain't had to grow up and experience a whole bunch of craziness. Our parents, you know, you might have been privileged. Y'all, that's, that's some privilege right there. If you grew up and people didn't abuse stuff, abuse drugs and stuff in your house and do all kinds of stuff, um, have prostitutes running all through your house, um, you privileged. Okay. So let's not take that for granted. All right. And so um, we, our love, again, our love for God ought to be the same as that sinner, those that did have some craziness going on in their house, right? Our love for God ought to be, ought to be endearing and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and ever growing. All right. Y'all got me talking again, y'all. Y'all know I'm not trying to talk the whole time. I need y'all to share with me. I'm trying to help us out. But I did want to share about, about Luke. Um, Luke 7, Luke 7, to get that in context, okay? Let, let's, let's, let's let our love for God be real. Somebody talk to me. What scripture is, is, uh, is really dealing with your heart? I like um, Joshua, what was that, 23 and um, 11. But I'm going to read it from um, the Amplified Version where it says, Verse 11 says, so be very careful mm -hmm. and watchful of yourselves to love the Lord your God. Uh, for if you ever turn back and cling to the rest of these nations, mm -hmm. these that are left among you and intermarry with them so that you associate with them and they with you, know and understand with certainty that the Lord your God will not continue to drive these nations out from before you, but they will be a snare and, and trap to you and a whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes until you per perish from this good land, which the Lord your God has given you. One thing that sticks out the most when it says uh, God will not continue to drive these nations. A nation is considered a, uh, like a large uh, body. It can be considered a large body of people. Um, sometimes we look at nations as, 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 as uh, continents or, or stuff of that nature, but a nation can be the people you hang around with. You know, it, there's people that we hang around with that, 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 that can cause a lot of affliction that can cause a lot of uh, unnecessary issues. And, and, and when uh, God is telling us, Hey, 
you don't need to associate yourself with people of this certain lifestyle, people of, of, of this culture, of people of a certain language. These, these, are, these are people that you know that I've commanded and told you that uh, they, they, they ain't trying to get right. They ain't trying to do right. They trying to pull you into the world. So uh, that, that scripture really hit hard where, where it says, so be very careful and watch for yourself. I got to watch me. I got to watch where I, I, where I allow my feet to go. I got to watch what I allow to entertain. I got to watch who, who, who I allow to. And, and what I noticed, and I'm going to shut up, but mm -hmm. I notice how a lot of people try to pour in you when they see that you are doing good or they see that you are living holy or they see that 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 you're you're you've changed from what you used to be. Now they want to bring you back and get all in your business and 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 try to get you to act unseemly. So I, 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 I'm learning even the more to just be careful and watchful. Uh, uh, um, of myself, you know, because God loves me and I love him and I can't turn back and clean to the things that he delivered me from or the people that he delivered me from. I got folks keep trying to pop back up <laughs> that I know that God has took out of my view and my rear view. So I'm just moving forward. So I believe we just got to be careful and watchful. And, 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 and keep folks out of our view and our rear view. Good, good stuff, good stuff. Anybody else wanna share? I mean, uh, uh, that's good. King James version on that says, take good heed. All right, take good heed. This stuff ain't no joke, all right? So uh, what is that one phrase? They say, you, you, can't, you can't kick the devil out if you sleeping with him. <laughs> Right, <laughs> try to kick the devil out, but you boy, you you married you. I mean, you hey, you sleeping with him? Yeah, you know, work like that. All right, quit sleeping with the devil, and you can kick him out. All right, somebody else. I read Matthew twenty four and twelve because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Mm. And then I read uh, the 13th uh, verse, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Mm. Say that. So what you what you get out of that? How, how did it touch you personally? Basically saying that you got to be strong. You got to whatever comes up, whatever comes up against you, you got to stand firm. You just got to stay in the, try your best to stay in the word and that's what I got out of it. Man. Hey, iniquity, y'all, iniquity is abounding, y'all. We are living in an iniquitous time, right? Bible say that in the latter days, perilous times are going to be here, right? Men are going to be lovers of themselves and all the discontinent um, haters of all that kind of stuff. Timothy speaks about it, y'all, um, because iniquity abounds. All of that stuff is abounding. And we're seeing it unravel right before our eyes. And so that's why the Bible says in Matthew 24, 12, right? The love of many shall wax cold. They're going to grow cold, wax cold. Their love, their love for God, their love for truth, their love for holiness, their love for uh, righteousness, their love for good, mercy and just justice. And, um, and so it's going to wax cold. And so, but then like uh, Sister Marvita said, but he that endures to the end. So we got to make a decision. I got, I'm going to endure this, right? I'm going to endure your way. Your way is better than this way. <laughs> All right. So uh, when, when, when the world is abounding in iniquity, we got to abound in love. When the world is abounding in, 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 in you know, in wickedness, again, we got to abound in, in, in mercy. All right. We got to abound in forgiveness. We got to abound in, 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 you know, in peace, all of that. All right. Uh, and so it's a it's a decision, you know, uh, it's not something we can do on our own. But when we make again, it's about making a decision. Um, let me tell you, we're, we're not strong enough to do it on our own. We're not wise enough. But God's grace is is good enough. 
right? The Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And so God's ability is able to help us. And so we all we need to do is make a decision. All right, God, I made a decision. Now I need you to help me. Okay. And so that invites the grace of God to help us. And so that's why when we do it God's way, it is beautiful. When we do, when we live and love God's way, it, it don't look like the Pharisees. It don't look a hot mess. All right. Come on, y'all. Don't be, don't be that hot mess church folk because we try to do it on our own. Everybody know what a hot mess with somebody that's a hot mess. Let's be nice to them. Don't man, don't be trying to call, you know, you a hot mess. And I pray for them, but you know what it looked like. Okay. Uh, so let me let me get off my tangent. Somebody else is burning up to share. Go ahead, share with us. Um, mine was also um, <laughs> Matthew 24 and 12. And when I read it, I first thought of, you know, the scripture in Matthew 7, 23, I never knew you depart from me, hmm. you worker of iniquity. And so um, I think when we think of iniquity, yes, it's sin, but uh, pertaining to that scripture, when I researched it, it talks about uh, the violation or contrary of law and um, just not even obeying in the law anymore. And then as you, if you go down to the love of many shall wax cold, when we use the word like, yo, you being cold to me, that means you won't even turn to me. You won't even help me. You won't even listen to me, you know? So you're past the point of lukewarm. You're just wax cold. Mm. Um, is what I got out of it. And then you're just decaying in iniquity. <laughs> mm. um, so that's what, uh, when I read that scripture, I'm like, whoa, I don't want to be, you know, wax cold to the love of God or even showing the love of, of God love to other people. And I definitely don't want to be cold. I definitely don't want to be a part of any violation or contrary of law, because then I thought of, you know, how dare us, obey like the laws of this world like we follow the laws to the t we know we can't rob a store or we'll get arrested this that, and other so we follow the laws of this world but but it's so difficult for people just to follow the law of the lord which gives us eternal life so um yeah i just that's what i got out of that scripture so uh, that's good that's good Somebody else want to share? Who else want to share? I think this is this is good. I need to see these scriptures be coming up. I need to, uh, man, because I ain't have them in my notes. But um, well, the Bible speaks about um, not having a love for the truth. All right, somebody look that up for me. Not having a love for the truth that they might be saved. And so, and so this is what we need to be praying for. God, help me to have a, a love for the truth, y'all. This, um, when we're talking about, you know, getting a hold of God and grabbing a hold of God, we can't just, th th this goes beyond just hearing the word and uh, going to church and, you know, praying and doing all that stuff that we know we're supposed to do. But we got to love to do that, right? Uh, a love of the truth the Bible speaks about. And um, and so what the Bible speaks about in that scripture is talking about how many are, are, are deceived with all deceivableness, the Bible speaks about and unrighteousness because they had not a love for the truth. Um, it speaks about that they might be saved. I know somebody is, is looking that up. And so um, in our prayer, you know, when we're when we're meditating and we're reading the word, uh, we're talking to God. Our prayer ought to be, God, help me to have a love for the truth. Is that Second Thessalonians? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I remember now, Second Thessalonians, uh, two and ten. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that up because I wanna, I do wanna read that because I think it's it's important for us. Don't just be in this way just to be in this way. Don't just say I'm a Christian because that's just a, you know politically correct thing to do you know, first of all now it ain't even politically correct people are don't even want to identify and people are very comfortable saying well, i'm not a christian and i don't do this i don't do religion people are very comfortable now and so and so uh 
uh, let's not let's not get deceived. The Bible says, and with all deceivableness and of unrighteousness in them that perish. Those that are perishing, uh, there's people that are perishing that go to church. There's people that are perishing that sing in the choir and do all kind of stuff. People that are perishing, right? That that preach the word. People are perishing out here, right? But the Bible says because they receive not the love of the truth, they really didn't love this. They were just doing it. Some people, some people preach out here for money, y'all. Um, there's the, how, you know how many motivational speakers out here they they, they some great orators and, and motivational speakers and they like man well I, let me find a way to get my money flowing so oh, let me go start a church <laughs> and so and so they got people uh, some people got a mega church right now and they are they're a, they're a motivational speaker and and they just and they just they don't love the truth. They they love they love the fact that people will pay them to 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 share some word with them. And so they they figure out a good way to bring the word across and they share the word, uh, uh, you know, and, and and they avoid a lot of stuff, you know, but they share the word that people like to gravitate to, you know, but because they don't have a love for the truth, you know, Bible say they're gonna people are gonna perish. Right. And so and so um, look, y'all, whatever we doing, you know, in our walk with God, let's do it out of love. OK, that's why the Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all of thy mind, all of thy soul and all of thy strength. Y'all, this is this is an ongoing journey of the, learning how to love him with everything in our mind, body, soul and spirit. OK, so uh, it, it's, it's just that series. Is, is that serious? Because I want to look at, I want to read that next scripture, y'all, because y'all think God be playing games. <clears throat> God don't really play games, y'all. People think God is just some little, uh, this lovey-dovey, teddy bear uh, kind of guy. No, God don't play games, y'all. And so when we don't have a love for the truth, here's what the Bible says. Look at verse 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11. The Bible says, and for this cause, because you don't have a love for the truth, y'all, this is some, this is some deeper meat. This is some deeper kind of meat. You know, you got to have to grow up. Uh, this is like some steak, all right? So, uh, babes on here, you ain't going to handle this right now. It's all right, all right? So, we, you keep drinking milk, and we're going to keep growing you up. But some, some of you that are a little older in this thing, the Bible saying, for this cause, God shall send uh, strong delusion. You want to play with me? You want to play church? You want to be self-righteous? You want to not... Uh, be for real. I'm going to send you strong de delusion that you should believe a lie, that you think that you okay. Come on, y'all. That, that's serious business, y'all. That's why we don't want to play with God, and, and we don't want to we don't want to uh, think that we fooling him, because he, he said, I'll give you a strong delusion, and that'll make you think you okay, and you not. That they might be damned who believe not the truth. <laughs> But the Bible said, have pleasure in unrighteousness, have pleasure in the world. So I'll say, he said, you, you, you want to love the world, you want to play, uh, but then you want to, you want to play like you got a hold of me too. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a strong delusion. Um, you're going to believe a lie and you're going to perish. Okay. So um, y'all that, that ought to, that ought to make us that ought to make us be real serious in our relationship with God, all right? That ought to make us take this uh, real serious, all right? Uh, and, and, and do it according, and love according, you know, because I really love you, all right? Serve God because I really want to please you, okay? Uh, so uh, no need to get scared or nervous on here. Let's just love God for real, okay? Just love him for real. Don't play with him, okay? Don't, don't, don't fake with him. Am I, am I talking? Am I talking good? I ain't getting no hand claps. So we ain't, we ain't getting no. I mean, I, I need to make sure y'all. I ain't talking about me hand clap. I'm saying, are, are we get? Are we? Are we good? Like, <laughs> all right, God. Let me take my my relationship serious. All right, we want to take it. We want to take it real serious because you don't want to be out here, man. I would hate to be the ones out here, right? You think you on your way? They singing us on one glad morning. When this life is over, I'm going to fly away. You're going to fly to the pit. All right. Because you didn't believe the truth. I didn't say it. God said it. All right. So, so don't play church. All right. A lot of people play church. I ain't talking about y'all. Come on. We're not playing church. Okay. Let's not play church. Let's not have a form of godliness. Okay. Let's not have a form of this thing. The Bible says and deny the power. 
all right? The power is what we need, right? The power is what we need to actually be holy. The power is what we need to actually forgive and show mercy and goodness. The power is what we need to have a sane mind and not walk in fear, right? We need the power of God, right? Uh, the grace of God that's going to actually keep us in this way and to help us to endure to the end. All right. So um, somebody else, y'all, come on. Y'all made me talk tonight. Y'all made me talk tonight. I don't, I don't, that's not fair, but it's all good. I hope it, I hope it was at least good. Sister Camel, what you think? You anointed. What you think? <laughs> I had uh I had thoughts about Matthew, but I'm trying to get back there in my uh in my Bible. Well, you went back on mute. It made me think about uh, something that happened um, at this place where I work. And I, I was having a conversation with somebody who works there and he just couldn't believe that, um, that I could love people that live lifestyles that I don't agree with. And so it kind of like blew his mind that I could still love those people. But then like, I was like, well, how am I going to do the work of Christ and get them, get them to come to repentance if I treat them differently? And so he was like, well, you don't think you'll subconsciously treat them differently? I'm like, well, that's the whole point of the love of God. Like you just said that God is about love and everything that you read in the Bible about Jesus is love, love, love. Well, how can I truly show love to these people if I treat them differently because they live differently? How can I do that? So it just, when I read it, it just made me think about how um, because there's so much. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mama. <laughs> because there's so much um iniquity um and so many other people um can't show love it's hard for people to believe that when you're truly grounded and rooted in christ you can still love people i didn't realize that people didn't believe that you could still love people that live differently than you until i had that conversation and so uh it was it was eye opening for me because I you hear about it, but you don't think that people could think that people don't believe that you can truly love people that live differently than you. That's good. Anybody want to elaborate on that? I think. I mean, not to skip ahead, but I mean, it goes to the, the last question of the study, you know, people feel that us as believers are judgmental, mm -hmm. so they don't want to go to church, they don't want to have an eye looking at them or whispers about them or, you know, fakeness or X, Y, and Z, because they feel that, oh, Christians or people of God, all they do is judge, so that perception is why like when Kim had the conversation with the person, how, why they feel like, like, how can you love everybody and they're, they don't, they're not saved? <laughs> why can't I? <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to, that, that's God's loving me and I'm giving it to other people. So it's the, the fear of judge, it's the perception of being judged. It's what people are automatically have in their mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so what do we do? So, I mean, we're, that's a good segue to this last one. What, what do we do? I mean, because the word's the word. So how do we minister the word in a way um, without watering down the word? Because we hear exactly what the word says. The Bible definitely tells us in Galatians 5, um, these such things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God, right? And it lays a whole list of everything, you know, covetousness, envious, and all of these kind of things, adultery, everything, it, it lays it out. So, so what do we do so that, um, you know, people don't feel feel judged or how do we message that how do we oh. somebody talk to us come on let's let's grow tonight you got to share your own experience you because i mean we we haven't always been saved we've all 
sinned and will still sin. And we're no different than anybody else. We just have a different walk and you have to share your own experiences with people so they know that you've been through. Cause sometimes people think that they're the only ones going through what they're going through. Cause I felt like that, I'm the only one. <laughs> and if you talk to people, you'll learn that they have also been through what you've been through. And you can just say that you came through that situation and share with them how you came through it with the word, with prayer, you know, and just just be real. Just got to got to keep it real. You can always tell when people are being fake. Good. I think you also have to walk beside people. Um, and you have to allow them to put you on a pedestal because we talked about this on Sunday in during Sunday school, but that pedestal is dangerous for both the person that may put you there and mm -hmm. they go into them, but they're looking up to you, but they put you in the place kind of like a God because they look to you as this person that is so much higher than them. But it's also dangerous to you because it puts you at expectations that you might not be able to fulfill, especially without, you know, the help of God. And so we have to make sure um, that we are walking alongside people um, on their journey and meeting them where they are. Amen. Good. I mean, I think th those both are really good. And being real, all that. Me and Sister Tia had a great conversation this morning in our one-on-one. -on -one, just, you know, hey, just just being real, walking alongside, uh, telling your story. Ms. Sister Marvita, we got to tell, I mean, tell your story. We all came from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody been saved your whole life. And so, and so um, here's what the Bible says about that. The Bible says, let him that think if he stands, Take heed lest you fall, right? And so that's why uh, when Sister Kim Kimmy J talking about judgmental, um, you know, you got we got to be really careful when we talking and we're ministering the gospel um, that it comes across judgmental and not in love. You know, we can we can still share Galatians five and all that kind of stuff and 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 the stuff that will keep you out of the kingdom of God, but we better do it in in love and much grace, right? And 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 share how. You know, we fell short, you know, let him that think if you stand or how you standing now, look, I'm here right now. Um, ain't on no goodness of my own. I will say that, right? Uh, it's because God is helping me. God is keeping me together. And so people need to hear and people need to have hope. So somebody else talk to us. I think I think this is this is good. Um, uh, love and kindness. Yes, love and kindness. Um, we, people need to feel the love and kindness. People need to know that you really care, you know, that you, that you willing to walk alongside, you know, Christ, Christ, the word is not, uh, not to meant to condemn us, right? The Bible says in Corinthians, we four and six, um, God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. So I love this scripture. He commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, have not shined in our hearts to give us a light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Y'all, this is what the Bible speaks about. And so he didn't come as a light to shine on us, right? As a condescending, oh, you idiots, you sinners, you, you ought to just throw you in hell. No, he came to shine out of the darkness. He got in the midst of us. He got in the fabric of who we are, right? Put on the nature of man and put on the, the, the nature of sin, right? Put on all sin. Um, and he took it to the cross, y'all. And so he's a compassionate God and um, he fights for us. And so people need to know the gospel story, you know? And so, and so when they hear the gospel, um, people run to the gospel, I thank God we got two we got two young men on here right now. These are my guys, y'all. Uh, they run to the gospel. They here. They've been on here. They came to church the last couple of weeks, right? On Bible study because the gospel is, is capturing their hearts, and so um, you know they don't feel they have to feel judgmental, judge like Sister Kim said, y'all. Just a pure gospel um, will reach us. Somebody else talk to us. What what else? What can we do, y'all? We got a generation to reach. We got souls to reach. How we and we got short time. We don't got all day. We I don't believe we got a whole bunch of time. What can we do? Um, you know, I looked and um, I'll be looking at studies and researches and stuff like that, and and the the Danish National Research Database uh, in two thousand nineteen. 
uh, they researched and they said the most persecuted religion or belief in the world is Christianity. <laughs> it's documented that, that, that we as Christians are the most persecuted, uh, systematically uh, persecuted as well, uh, a group of individuals in the entire world. You know, and, and you know, we, we are persecuted for his name's sake, but uh, God, he always and has always made a way of escape, you know, and, and, you know, people will overcome by the words of our testimony, because uh, uh, I've learned that I would, I'm probably the only or the first Bible, walking Bible, that people have ever seen, ever heard. You know, I am first partaker of 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 the light, the salt of the earth that people has to see or need to see. You know, so I, I believe if 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 we just continue to uh, keep the faith and keep walking with God and let God use us the way He chooses and wants to use us. Uh, we'll be able to turn the world upside down, even in the midst of persecution. You know, so uh, I, I, I just go with it and, and allow God to be God and, and, and do what he do, because he's not going to leave us. He's not going to fail us. He has our, our best interests at heart. He's working with us and he's keeping us, even though we are persecuted. And the Bible just declared that we shall be persecuted. So there's no way around it. Absolutely. All right, good stuff. Um, I think this was all. I think this was all some really, um, really good insight. Um, and so, I mean, and it's something that we need to continue to to build depth in as as we pray. God help us to uh, to be able to reach souls with the gospel uh, uh, and and do it in love. All right, somebody who somebody put on here the word is meant. The word is meant to convict us, not condemn us. That's absolutely right. And so if people are feeling condemned when we are sharing the gospel, we're not sharing the gospel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, people, if people feel like you're putting them in hell, you're not, we're not preaching the gospel. Okay. Um, so uh, there ought to be some conviction. Conviction is different. Conviction is good for us. All right. And uh, uh, conviction is what is that which causes us to have a desire to turn. All right, Conv uh, condemnation makes us feel doomed. All right, and so that's that's where the judgment comes in. So we got to pray that God gives us the ability. The Bible says, uh, "Be wise as serpents." Okay, so when we're ministering, be wise as serpents uh, and harmless as doves. So so we want to be harmless. You don't want to kill people. All right. Uh, the church is good for killing people. Somebody said that, right? <laughs> Don't be contrary in your walk. Praise the Lord. Someone, come on, Kimmy J. That 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 will help your witness an awful lot. <laughs> Don't be contrary in your walk. Some people don't see a difference. Uh, we must show them in truth that walking with Jesus is so much worth it. All right. And and so some people, um, your witness is your walk. You may not ever talk to them. You may not ever sit down and have a, a mini Bible study with them. Some people are watching you at the store, the, the whatever store we frequent with the most, that could be somebody working there. They just watching, right? Somebody on your job is definitely watching. Somebody in your family is most definitely watching, right? That one, that one you keep on saying, man, you need to come on to church. Oh, okay. They may not have came yet and you asked them for, for five years, but they've been watching you for five years. <laughs> all right so so um let, let's make sure that that our walk is worth it y'all and we got to start living in some victory y'all come on people of god i don't want to follow no jesus and you can't make me follow your jesus and you always sad mm -hmm. you don't never got no joy you ain't never getting over you ain't never winning come on i can be i stay in the world for that what i'm gonna be what what I know there's going to be persecution, like I need my said, but hey, I'm going to have some joy. I'm going to have some victory. God, I'm going to see God making a way in, and, and, and his light and his glory shining on our life. Favor is going to be on my life somewhere, somehow. All right? I'm going to have some fruit of the spirit 
the fruit of the spirit operating in my life. Come on, we got to give some, some people got to see something. All right, the Bible says you should know them by their fruit. So, so, so let, let's show the world something. That's how we're going to ultimately win them, right? People ought to be coming to Christ because they just see our walk, man. They see like, man, that, that person full of joy, that person going through, but they don't go through like I do. I use vices, but that that person, they, 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 they praising God. Okay. So, so that let, let's, 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 let's pray to God, help us y'all because 80% y'all of, of people 14 to 33 years old feel church ain't important. This ought to grab our hearts as believers. All right. We know somebody within that 14 to 33 year old, you know, age frame. All right. We got kids. <laughs> we got family. All right. And if 80% of them, that means, come on, eight out of 10 in our own, in our own um, faith community, if statistics are, are go along what it says, are going to leave. So that ought, to, that ought to stir up in our hearts. God, help us to get this right. Help us to live this thing out right. Help us to um, share the love of God with our, with our family, with our babies, our children, um, so that when they do stray, because everybody strays, all right? The Bible says we all, like sheep, have strayed away. All right, so it's one thing to stray, but it's a whole other thing to fall away and never come back. All right. I want if my kid when my kids stray and they try to they try to find themselves, navigate, I want them to navigate right on back to the loving arms of God, like I did, like you did, right? I was 22. Right. I went down that aisle and I got married. And and 10 days later, August 20th, 11 days later, man, I was on my knees. I said, God, I need you. God, I don't want to be married if I don't have the Holy Ghost, because it ain't gonna work. <laughs> Man. All right. I want, I want, I want you to help me. I grew up in church and I'm tired of running. All right. So, so let, let's, let's pray that God helps us, right. To be effective witnesses. Let's pray that God help us to reach our own family. Right. Uh, I look at other statistics that United States is, is the most, is, is becoming the most impoverished country when it comes to uh, Christianity. They're becoming more and more secular more than the other countries that we all try to go out and do missions and, and foreign missions. We, the foreign missionaries need to come to the United States, right? Because we are, we are waxing cold. And so, come on, let's reach our city. Let's reach our community. Let's reach our family. Let's reach our friends. All right. So uh, what is Nehemiah? And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Uh, for therefore I am sent. Come on, we need to preach this thing. All right. They say church folks don't have fun. Yeah. Come on, y'all. That's that's where that <laughs> sister Kim. I gotta close, y'all, because you you about to open up another can of worms. All right. They don't have fun in holiness, y'all. Come on, man. We have fun, y'all. We have safe fun. We have good fun. All right. We have fun that don't got you gotta regret it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need to have some fun, y'all. Uh, but you know, we can have some fun and and not and not get worldly. All right, we, we can have some we can have some fun, and we need to we need to get hang out some more, have some fun when COVID you know ease up and all that stuff. But but y'all, come on, y'all, uh, at least smile and have joy. All right, Amen. that's what I'm saying. All right, so people people don't come over here. All right, so I already talked about that. All right, I'm done. Any any last any last comments? Any last? Um, questions about anything. I think this is good.